Well, this is Narmok. It's a tiny little fishing village here, just up the coast from Sedanin. Up the coast from Sedanin, past La Ode, and there we are, right here on the coast. Little fishing village of Narmok. So one of the things I do here in Morrowind is that I conduct home inspections on behalf of the Emperor. Uriel Septim himself has commissioned me to travel the land of Vardenfell and make sure that everything is in order in the homes of the inhabitants of the island. Uriel's a busy man and he can't always be everywhere at once, so he sends agents out like me to conduct these very important inspections. Now it should go without saying, but obviously this tape is for Uriel Septim's eyes only. Emperor, sir, sire, I hope you'll find this inspection of the town engaging, entertaining, and informative. Now first of all, I have to know Note that there's a big disparity between this fine manor on the top of the hill and the ramshackle shacks on the waterfront. Clearly there is some wealth inequality in the town, but that is to be expected in any modern society. So there's no cause for concern at this time. I'm going to begin the inspection with this abode here. It's a rather large shack, and out front there's a table with a lantern emitting a nice orange glow, as well as a fishing pole leaned up against the table, no doubt used for catching fish, and an empty basket. The sign on the door says it's Nadine Rotherin's shack. Let's go inside. Oh my! Uh, folks, forgive the intrusion, but I'm here on official orders from the Emperor to do some home inspections here in Narmok. If you'll all just remain calm and remain stationary, this will be over before you know it. Well, this home appears to be populated by three Dark Elves. This handsome man named Anas Olven, this bougie bee named Sodrara Andalas, and this contemptible cunt named Selvura Andrano. There's this smirking gentleman here, this lusty lady, as well as this smug bitch. Well, let's take a quick look at what's in the house here. We've got three sacks in the corner. We've got scuttle, egg, scuttle. On the table, there are two place settings with two plates and two knives, no forks or spoons, a large jug and a bottle, a tankard and two wine goblets, an empty basket, and four ash yams. There's a barrel by the fire containing salt rice. The fire itself is burning brightly and there's enough spare wood to keep it going all night. There's a metal bucket with a spoon in it, probably used for cooking large soups to feed the many people who apparently live here. This sack contains racer plumes and large quama egg. This one has bone meal, drag wax, hackle leaf, and scales. There's a cup and a fork and a plate on top of this crate. Perhaps one of the inhabitants prefers to eat standing up over here in the corner. And there's a bottle, of course, perhaps containing a delicious wine or fizzy drink. Inside the crate, there's an exclusive restore strength potion, a plate, two baskets, a bottle, a cup, two gold, and a petty soul gem. In this cloth sack, there are three pieces of hound meat. In this crate, there is a basket, two bottles, a cup, three gold, and two vases. There are two hammocks strung up in the corner of the room. Curious, considering there are three people, but perhaps they sleep in shifts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there is a sack on the floor near the hammocks with nothing in it. There is a crate with a jug and three bottles on top. Inside the crate there are of course three pieces of salt rice. In the wooden barrel behind the hammocks there is five pieces of scuttle. Now it wouldn't be a home inspection if I didn't make sure there's nothing hiding under these pillows. This one, nothing. And this one has nothing. Oh my. Well it would appear that I've angered the people in this room so I will have to make my exit quickly. Do I know you? Uh nope. Nope. You don't know me at all, sir. Goodbye. Well, moving right along, I wouldn't want to dwell on the events of the past minute or so. Uh, this little shack has a wooden barrel out front with five hackalo leaf. This apparently belongs to Anglalos, and it is locked. However, using the authority bestowed upon me by you, sire, I will be unlocking this door with the universal unlocking spell you taught me during my home inspector training course. Thank you for that, by the way. And now the door is unlocked. Let's go inside. Anglolos' shack. Oh my, it is quite small in here. Um, it is, uh, dismal. 
It's a dismal little dwelling. It's a dim, dismal dwelling. Perfectly fit for a poor, lonely man. Uh, his poop bucket is pristine. Conveniently located right next to his table so he can quickly process his meals and excrete the extra essence from the meal. His uh, table is set up just for one, barely enough room for one person to sit with one jug, one cup, one plate, one knife, one bowl, and one spoon, and a very handsome bamboo candlestick. There is a knocked over bottle on the floor. One can imagine that Anglolos was laying down in bed, dropped his drink, passing out from drunkenness, and the bottle rolled over and stopped finally there near the foot of the bed. A sad existence, but one I've seen before. I am numb to this. Now in the corner there are three sacks. One of them contains elite hide, ash yam, comberry, green lichen, netch leather, and wick wheat. The other contains elite hide, and the final contains salt rice. Checking under his pillow just to be sure, we do not find anything, so that is fine. In the corner by the door there is a fishing pole leaning against the wall, no doubt used for catching fish. In the sacks on the floor we find salt rice and more salt rice. In this sack we find three pieces of scuttle, there are two empty baskets on the floor, and finally in the corner there is a crate containing common pants and an expensive amulet, a bamboo candlestick, and a bottle sit atop the crate, as does a very large and expensive book called The Rear Guard. Taking a quick peek in the book, one can see that it is a light armor instruction booklet. This is a very valuable book indeed, one that is not befitting of some such a poor home. I've concluded, of course, the obvious. This book must be stolen property, and I will be repossessing it in the name of the Emperor. Long live Uriel Septim. And that about does it for this home. Everything looks to be in good repair. Um, it's a fine home for a poor single man. Continuing on to our next home here, we find three crates on this boardwalk. One contains nothing, the other contains nothing, and the final one contains a bottle, a goblet, five gold, a petty soul gem, and a pitcher. There's also a wooden barrel next to them, containing five, scuttle, and a glass lantern sits on top. Oh, hello, Anglolos. I was just in your house. Tell me about yourself. A professional popper, eh? I've met people like you before. You're one of the humble small folk. Yes, yes, I've heard your story a thousand times. You bore me, frankly. <sighs> Well, good day, sir. Maybe you should go home and do a little bit of light reading. <laughs> I have to note that the gaps in between these boards are quite large, and this appears to be a lawsuit waiting to happen. One could quite easily fall through if one were not paying close attention. A broken leg or a sprained groin may be waiting for those unlucky enough to tumble down through the gap. All right, let's enter in this next shack. This is Rostlogi's shack. Oh, and here she is. Hello, Rostlogi. I can't help you. Okay, well, look, I'm not looking for any help. I'm here on official duties from the Emperor. What's wrong with your eyes, by the way? Well, just stay right there. I have business to conduct in your home. Any interference with the work I'm doing here will be met with uh, swift punishment, so please, uh... Just mind your own business and uh, ignore me. I'll be out of here in no time. Now, Ross Loggy keeps a basket of firewood next to her door. However, she does not have a fire in her home. Very curious indeed. Inside this basket, we find one bottle. Inside this knocked over wooden barrel, we find five pieces of hound meat. On the floor next to her disgusting brown hammock, there are a bottle and a cup. She appears to be a drinker, like many poor people, no doubt drinking herself to sleep each night, wondering where her life went so, so wrong. She must be a heavy drinker, as there is yet another bottle on the floor and another cup. Perhaps she sleeps on both ends of the bed and wants to make sure that there is a bounty of drink in no matter which orientation she lies. It is also notable that she has no pillow on her hammock, so no under the pillow inspection is necessary at this time. What makes this smell? Fuck you, bitch. Just stand there and keep looking at two different things at once, okay? Jeez. Now beyond her hammock is a sack with five salt rice. There's a crate with a common ring and an expensive skirt, which she has chosen not to wear, curiously. There's a nice glass lantern burning away. Now in the wooden barrel, we find five pieces of salt rice. Two Rustlogies left, we have a sack with red lichen, stoneflower petals, and trama root. Some low-end ingredients. Two Rustlogie, excuse me. There is 
a piece of paper, a plate, a bottle, a bowl, a cup, a goblet, and two gold. In the barrel, we find a ring of fireball. That is dangerous. I'll be confiscating that. Don't move. Um, two bottles, two cups, three gold, a spoon, and a vase. Uh, excuse me. I need to get past you here. There we go. Now her table is haphazardly pushed into the corner of the room at an angle. Very inefficient use of space. However, it does create the opportunity for storage space behind the table, which she has filled with sacks. In the first sack, we find ash yam, guar hide, and netch leather. In the second sack, we have five pieces of scuttle. And the sack is, for some reason, perched upon a stool. She could be using that stool or seating for herself or guests, but has chosen to make it a sack stool instead. Who am I to judge, eh? Now the table is sparsely populated by one bottle, one knife, one plate, one bowl, one other plate, one knife, and one fork. There is also a large jug, no doubt filled with moonshine for this heavy drinker, and yet another bottle. She sure does enjoy her drink. In the basket suspended from the ceiling, there is nothing. There is a sack leaned up against two barrels containing black anther, muck, scuttle, and slowed soap. There are two more sacks on top of the barrels, one containing five scuttle and one containing five scuttle. The barrels themselves contain nothing and nothing. Well, that ought to do it for Russ Logie's contemptible cabin, her disgusting domicile. Russ Logie appears to have a severe drinking problem. I recommend that we dispatch an Imperial Temperance Officer to assist Russ Logie with her unfortunate drinking habit, which will no doubt cause her life to continue to spiral downward as she sinks lower and lower into her addiction. Her eyes drift further and further apart. She grows old, eventually withering away, developing chronic illnesses, before finally expiring cold and alone on her hammock while the sweet drops of her drink leak from the corner of her mouth as she gasps out her moist final breath. Thank you for your time, Russ Logie. I'll be moving on to our next home now. Goodbye. I suppose I could spare a moment or two. Car Yarl, hello. What do you do? A little of this, a little of that? Interesting. He okay, so, Emperor, Sire, uh, this man has freely admitted to me that he is a thief. I think it would be wise. Once again, I do recommend that we get a contingent of Imperial Peacekeepers out here to uh, enforce the law, because apparently the locals don't have any interest in enforcing the law. Now, this man who just told me that he is a thief appears to live here on the waterfront in his little shack here. I'll be breaking down the door now to inspect the home. This is a tiny, tiny home. Very, very sad indeed. This is what a life of crime gets you, everybody. This is a sad look into the life of a criminal. This is how you're gonna live if you do crime. Okay. All right, let's get this inspection over with. I don't want to be in this pitiful dump any longer than I have to. Right by the door, there is a chest. In the chest, there are six ill-gotten coins. I'll be taking those, clearly. In the sack, there's scuttle. In the sack, there's scuttle. In the sack, there's salt rice. And in the sack, there's salt rice. In the crate, there's a common amulet, a common ring, and an expensive belt. Excuse me, correction. In the crate, there's a common amulet and a common ring. In the sack on top of the crate, there's crush fiber and wick wheat. There's a huge amount of candles on the barrel in the corner next to a bottle and a cup perched right next to the bed, no doubt because this man drinks a lot. And in the barrel, of course, there's more salt rice. Go figure. Wouldn't be an inspection if we didn't look under this criminal's pillow. However, we do not find we do not find any evidence of crimes underneath his pillow. In the barrel, there are many ingredients. And what is this? A chapel limeware bowl. If I was an idiot, I wouldn't think anything of this. However, I'm a smart guy. I went to inspector's college. I know a crime when I see one. And this, sire, is a crime. I will be taking this crime into my possession. No more crime will be left in this home when I'm through with it. Now this table curiously appears to be set up for two 
different diners. So clearly this man must have a friend or a lover, perhaps? Atop the table, of course, there is a bottle, a cup, a fork, a plate, a knife, a bowl, a cup, a fucking spoon, a friggin' bowl, a stupid plate, and a damn jug, and a knife, and a glass lantern. Under the table, there's nothing. Nothing but, nothing but shame and empty promises. And that's about it for this home. I uncovered the crime and I took it. Oh, well, things got a little heated in that house. I was I was getting mad at the things I was finding in there. This self-confessed thief had a stolen item. Shameful. But we have to move on. If we walk around past the boat and up onto this side of the boardwalk, we come to Mushmere's shack. Let's go inside and see if Mushmere is home. Ah! Hello! Hello, Mushmere. Hello, Mushmere. You surprised me, you see. Tell me about your background. Ah, another pauper, of course. Well, sir, you live in a tiny home fitting of such a noble profession. A noble pauper such as yourself. Mushmere! Well, Mushmere, I'm going to be conducting an inspection of your home. Please remain where you are and do not interfere, or else I will call the police on you. Okay, now Mushmere has a collection of sacks in the corner, as is common with these poor people. Bunch of garbage in them, nothing really to speak of. In this wooden barrel, of course, we have eggs. Go figure. You know, everybody around here is kind of the same. I feel like I could inspect one home and be done. Uh, he's got a hammock set up, of course. No pillow. He doesn't need a pillow. He's a tough lizard man. Tough, weird lizard man. No pillow. Okay. No pillow for Mushmere. Now on his table he has a bottle and a bottle and a knife and a cup and a plate and a bowl and a spoon. Spoon. And Mushmere, what is this book? This book is worth 275 gold, if I had to guess. What are you doing with it? You're poor. You're supposed to be poor. What, did you spend all your money on this book and now you have to live in a shack by the water? What the hell is wrong with you? Let's see, what is this book? 2920 First Seed, huh? Hmm, a spear training book, eh? Well, it's clearly too expensive for your lifestyle, so unfortunately, sir, I'm gonna have to conclude that this is a stolen property. I'll be confiscating this. Yeah, well, I'm not a scoundrel, I'm not a thief, I work for the government. Oh, finally, in his barrel in the corner, there's nothing. In his cloth sack, there's gross scuttle. And in his other barrel, there's absolutely nothing. Where do you poop, sir? Do you have a poop bucket? I don't see a poop bucket. Are you pooping in the street? Are you pooping off the side of the dock? You disgust me. <laughs> Goodbye. Ah, these last two shacks are just... I'm getting... I'm getting mad, Emperor. Sir, sire, I'm getting very mad. All right, finally, let's go into this shack here. This is Jerian Dolbanit's shack. Jerian Dolbanit. Do I know you? Fuck off. Now this is probably a Breton, if I had to guess. Let's let's go inside and investigate. Oh, who shouldn't be here? Uh, actually, on the contrary, sir, I'm here on orders from the Emperor. Ever heard of him? Yeah, a little guy called Uriel Septum. Yeah, so maybe I should be here. You ever think of that? Okay. You pipe down. You quiet. You keep yourself fucking quiet. You stand there. You can watch me if you want, you sick freak. But I'm gonna inspect the shit out of your home, okay? Fuck you. Oh, what's this, sir? Is this your poop bucket? Huh? Are you pooping in this bucket? You disgust me. In these sacks next to the broom, we've got Scuttle, go figure, Scuttle, go figure, and s oh, uh, Scamp Skin, go figure, Slowed Soap, go figure, Hackalo Leaf, hm, this table is set up for two, I see, but I don't see two, sir, I don't see two, you living in a fantasy world? You don't have two in here, you're one guy, one fucking low-life fucking guy. In the wooden barrel behind the table, we've got salt rice. In the cloth sack, we got salt rice. You like rice, huh? Hmm? You sick son of a bitch. I'm not even gonna comment on what I'm seeing on this table. It disgusts me. In the crate by the door, there's paper. A bottle. A bottle. A bottle. A bowl. A cup. And gold. On top, there's a bottle. And a bowl. The brown ones seem to last longer. Shut up. 
In the corner, there's a barrel. I gotta calm down here. Ah, inside the barrel, there's a vase, a bottle, a bowl, a cup, a two gold, a pitcher, and a spoon. In the wooden barrel, in the corner, there's five pieces of hound meat. Hmm. Rotting meat in your home, sir. Now, in the sacks under his bed, there's five scuttle and five salt rice. I shouldn't have pushed so hard. Are you trying to apologize to me now? It's too late for you, sir. The Imperial Peacekeepers are on their way as we speak. Think about that. Now, under this disgusting man's pillow, there's nothing. Of course. Of course. Well, I can't wait to get out of here. Jerrion. Jerrion. Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Go fuck yourself, bitch. <laughs> Well, that's all the poor people's homes in town. I gotta say, I'm very disappointed so far. Uh, all that's left here is to go into this nice manor up here, but what's in these crates first? Hmm, five bottles, and five bottles, and nothing. Okay, good use of storage out here. Now, finally, we're done with the poor people. Yeah, like you. Get out of here. Go ahead. Let's go inside this rich home. Knock, knock. Is anyone home? Ah, there's more to this than a single room. Very nice. Let's go to the right over here. Oh, a very lovely dining room. A beautiful shelf, neatly organized. Two more shelves, very neatly placed. Very elegante, if I may say. A shelf unit over here. Again, very well organized, very, very neat. This is very refreshing. Inside these chests, got nothing. And forks, knives, and spoons. Oh my. This is a lovely home, sir. Who are you? Dridas Salvani, huh? What's your background, sir? Oh, you're a scout and a lawman of the Great House Lalu. Excellent. You know the Empire is quite friendly with the Great House Lalu. I'm finally among people of sophistication and class. Well, sir, if I may introduce myself, Excuse me, I was speaking to you. <clears throat> if I may introduce myself, my name is Inspector Ass. I'm here on behalf of Emperor Uriel Septim personally. He personally sends me out to these shithole towns to uh, conduct inspections of the homes, make sure that everything is in order. Don't, hey, where are you going? Where, hey, where are you going? Anyway, uh, I want you to know that I'm here on official business and nothing untoward is occurring. So if you will just allow me to go about my business, I will allow you to go about yours. Thank you. Now, I just have to admire this table set for a moment here. It's a lovely setup with four spaces, four places to dine. We have lovely silverware and plates and cups, all very neatly organized. Everything is placed just so. Everything is ready for a dining experience. A far cry away from the disgusting poor people's homes that I've been inspecting thus far. Now as we go down the hallway here, we come to a door. Let's open the door. And down the hallway from th from there, we go down into what appears to be a cellar. There's a nice torch burning down here, keeping things illuminated. Now let's inspect every single one of these containers, shall we? In the first wooden barrel, tipped over as it may be, there are five pieces of salt rice. In the second wooden barrel, upright as can be, there are five pieces of salt rice. In the next barrel, there's a bottle two cups, a goblet, four pieces of gold, and a petty soul gem. Another barrel contains a bottle, three goblets, four gold, and a spoon. The next barrel contains two cups, four gold, a petty soul gem, and two vases. In the barrel, sitting atop the other barrels, there's a bottle, three gold, a petty soul gem, a plate, and a spoon. Pretty classy so far. These rich people really know how to store crap, don't they? In this wooden barrel here, there's five scuttles in this crate, a piece of paper, a bottle, a bowl, a cup, a cup, and ten gold. In the crate on top of the crate, there's a common belt, a common shirt, and expensive pants. Uh, correction, there is only a common belt and a common shirt. In the next crate, there is a basket, two bottles, a cup, two goblets, and six gold. In the corner, in the barrel, there's slowed soap, heather, hound meat, kagudi hide, muck, and salt rice, and scathe craw. 
The next barrel, of course, contains elite hide, chokeweed, hackalow leaf, and heather, as well as some muck. Gross. This next barrel contains kagudi hide, slowed soap, trama root, black lichen, Comberry, drag wax, two drag wax samples, in fact, some gold canet flowers, grave dust, and a piece of hound meat. Truly a remarkable assortment of alchemical treasures in this barrel. In the chest next to the barrel, there's a quality restore personality potion. Perhaps I should drink this because I became so sour after inspecting all those poor homes. Ah, I feel better now. So, as I was saying, in this chest there is a blue clay pot, a bottle, and a redware pot. In the sack on top, there's muck and scamp skin. In this crate, there's a large quama egg. That's cool. In this crate, there- Oh, man! Another large quama egg. That's amazing. In the basket on top of this crate, let's see what's in there. Oh, dude! Five hackalow leaf! Awesome. Now in this crate, oh, there's nothing in there, but hey, you know what? That's all right. There's a lot of space for stuff if you ever want to put stuff in there. Now in this wooden barrel, ooh, five salt rice. That's good if you get hungry. And in this barrel, ooh, five quama eggs. You know, those go great with salt rice. Hmm, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. That concludes the inspection of this lovely little storage room down here. The cellar, you might say. Let's go back up. Well, that was just a lovely little basement. Oh, you know what? I love these purple tapestries on the wall. And this purple candle really matches with them very well. You know what? I like this this home. Sire, I am very impressed with this home so far. And I didn't even mention this lovely rug in the dining room. Really, really ties it all together. Hmm. Just imagine taking your shoes off and rubbing your toes into the fibers on the rug while you dig into some salt rice and quama egg on the table. Ah. <sighs> Can I stay here? Can I? Ah well, back to work. Let's go downstairs on this side of the dining room. What do we have down here? Ooh. Hoo 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 hoo. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Hello, Almse Arenum. Who are you? What do you do? An agent and oathman of the Great House Lalu. Wow, that is really respectable. I respect you. You're a heck of a person, aren't you? Well, I'm here to inspect this room. I will respect you while I inspect this room. Oh, and it is a lovely room. This red lantern gives it such a inviting and cozy glow. Now in this basket, we have, ooh, a vase. In this basket, ooh, a piece of paper. In this sack, ooh, nothing in there, that's all right. In in this giant closet, we have an exquisite belt, an exquisite ring, exquisite robe, and exquisite shoes. Oh, whoever owns this wardrobe is a lucky, lucky person, wouldn't you agree? Now, look at this exquisite bed right next to this exquisite clothing container. What a lovely little mattress. It's so bouncy, too. What a great place. Now in the sack next to the bed, we got nothing and nothing. Now past this divider over here, there is another bed. It's not quite as nice as the other one, but you know what? It looks pretty good to me. I wouldn't mind curling up on here for a few hours, eh? Hey? Ah. Anyway, um, in the sack here, we have nothing beautiful. On top of this dresser, we have a bottle, a bottle, a bottle, and two yellow glasses. Those look very respectable. Much better than those wooden cups that the poor people use. Nice little redware candle. That's a very elegant design. Nice, nice handle on it. Carry that bad boy around all day. Now there's a redware bowl and a redware pot as well. Now in the drawers here, we have expensive pants and an expensive shirt or two, just like the one I'm wearing, and some expensive shoes. In the basket next to the drawers, we've got scuttle, scuttle, and nothing in the sack. Very good. Well, I don't have a problem with this place at all. Thank you for uh, allowing me to do my inspection. I'll leave you in peace and have fun curling up on that bed over there. Ho oh, hoo. Now we'll exit that little cubicle. Do I know you? Yeah, remember me? It's Inspector Ass. I've been in here for a few minutes. I got a little bit more inspecting to do and then I'll be out of your hair, sir. Thank you. All right, we still need to check upstairs. Ooh, upstairs appears to be another little bedroom area. This table's got a bottle and a goblet and a bowl and a bowl and a spoon and a candle. Not bad at all. Love rug and tapestries. Very cool, very cozy environment. Is this your room, sir? Draras Barano? What's your background? Oh, what you do is your own affair, huh? 
Well, ordinarily I would find that suspicious, but this is just such a lovely home. I can't imagine anything untoward. I can't imagine anything wrong in here. So you are probably a great person. Handsome too. On this shelf here we have a goblet, a vase, a flask, and a green glass. I like that green glass. It's beautiful. Now sir, in accordance with the Imperial Charter of Inspection, Section 4, Subsection 6A, of course, you're familiar with this, it it says that I may inspect all of your locked containers, so uh, forgive me while I rummage through here, but it is my job after all. In the locked chest, we have an expensive amulet, an expensive ring, and 25 gold. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Now, I better check under his pillow just to be safe. Nothing weird under there. No problem at all. Well, sir, thank you for tolerating this intrusion. Go about your day, please. Enjoy your lovely little room. And I'll be now exiting through this door. On to... Ooh. Well, what this that? appears to be a lovely little outdoor seating area. Patio. Porch. What? Whatever you want to call it. Rooftop garden, you might even say. Got a nice weathered table out here with some cups and a bottle. And a handsome woman, if I may say. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. What's your background? Savant and retainer? What's that? Ah, you're a woman of wide learning and cosmopolitan tastes. A well-traveled woman, educated, refined in manner, able to converse on various topics with authority, and a woman ever ready to defend her honor and the honor of your companions. Interesting. So in short, I see before me a gentlewoman. You can discourse upon history, speechcraft, language, and customs, and for a fee you offer training that will permit you to share a few of your many virtues. Well, I've never met a woman quite like you. You're something else, Andilo Thalos. Thank you for deigning to speak with me. I appreciate you. Now, as the structure of this building affords me the opportunity, I will now be traveling up onto the roof to do a little roof inspection. Yes, things appear to be in order up here. Um, the house appears to be in good repair. I don't see any cracks or anything. And on the top of the roof, this place looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't think I have anything to criticize up here. Well, sire, that appears to complete the inspection of Narmok. Uh, you know, I wasn't really liking it before I came into this home, but I think I'm gonna have to give the town an overall rating of excellent. This is an excellent town. Incredible! That was fun. <sighs> Anything you'd like to add? I uh, think that you're doing a very good service for the province. And I think the emperor will really appreciate all the hard work you're doing. <laughs> Even though you did miss those two pillows. Look, there was nothing under them anyway. Well, how that was a respectable, high-class home. They're not going to be harboring any... What? You don't think they have any self-defense knives? That's not a crime. I, I never said it was a crime, okay. but you didn't you didn't check. That's I could, all. I could feel that everything was on the up and up. Sure, right. You were vibing it. Uh, yeah, I go on vibes, mostly. Mostly vibes, yeah. <laughs> it's not like I dive into every single container in a room. Also, there's a boat? Yeah. You didn't go on the boat. So what? Is that's, that not part of the job? It's not a home. Okay. I'm a home inspector. Okay. Lady. Okay. Okay. I'm just I'm just checking. Okay. Well, check somewhere else because you have nothing to see here. Okay. Fine. My credentials are in order. <laughs> My record is pristine. <laughs> And my future is bright. Aww. So, if you'll kindly <laughs> shuffle your sorry behind out of the room. You asked me here. Go get me a pizza. Uh. And, and we'll have a great day. That's true. Okay? Okay. Well, thank you You're for welcome. sharing. Thank you for being here. It was um, my pleasure. Yes, it was your pleasure, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Mwah. Yes. <laughs>